Stegosaurus. Definitely a dinosaur which you can call iconic. Featured in many franchises like Jurassic Park or Walking with Dinosaurs. While we all can agree that he is not the strongest dinosaur to have ever existed, he definitely has the weapon to be lethal. Of course, true power is not just having a lot of strength and weapons at your disposal, but the knowledge on how to use it. So I'm going to teach you this in this video. Hello there, my name is Adam Mokta, and today I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Stegosaurus. Now to get the disclaimers out of the way, any and all future updates may change the way you fight and play as a Stegosaurus. And my time with the Stegosaurus are pretty limited, so one of your more experienced Stegosaurus player may not agree with everything I say. And if you find something disagreeable, just comment it down below in a mature way. And with that, let's hop into it. In this video, we will be going over the following as Arsenal, the type of subspecies you should choose to grow, the terrain compatibility for Stegosaurus, and the types of fights you can find yourself in. Be it you versus an Apex, you versus a pseudo Apex, you versus low tiers or just rats, and you versus a pack. And at the end, I'll come with a summarize. We have no head abilities, but for senses, we have also no abilities, but we'll get that in the future. Behind, we have three options, and this is getting a bit interesting. I'll explain a bit more detail on which one you should use and when. The first one being Tough Scout, which increases your armor by 15%. Second one is Resilient Scales, which increases bleed and venom healing by 30%. And last but not least, Solar Powered Place, which increases stamina regeneration by 30% during the day. This ability also works even if the sun is not out. There only needs to be daytime for it to be activated, and during nighttime it will be deactivated, which is why I switched to Defense Hide during the nighttime. There is a reason to why you should use Solar Place during the day over the Defense Hide, but I'll come back to that later. For leg abilities, we have two options. The first ability is Pivot, which means that standing in place for 5 seconds will drastically increase your turning speed, and it will deactivate once you move. Second are just Traction, which increases turning speed at the cost of stamina regeneration. There is a reason why I would choose Pivot over the other one, and I'll come back to that later. It makes more sense when you see it uh, yourself. Backlim are just Long Distance Runner, which reduces stamina drain by 15% absolutely necessary. For tail attack we have two options. We have the normal tail attack which causes heavy bleed and a pretty decent in damage output as well. And the second one is just a charge up version which costs no stamina. And we don't have any call abilities yet. Everybody has their preference but this is at least what I use. Also taking account to switching with hide during night time. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose I would actually go with Balanced one. The thing about the Stegosaurus, you don't really need the extra speed, more so the extra defense. But on the other hand, choosing more defense at the cost of speed may make it so it's more difficult to dodge charge up attack and that is really crucial if you can't uh, dodge the charge up attack from Apexes. As balance, you have enough speed, you have enough defense, you can't really go wrong with that. But of course, the final choice is yours. When it comes to where you should fight as a Stego, well, remember that we do not have any head abilities, so you will only be relying on your tail for attacks. If you also take into consideration that you'll take more damage if you get hit on the head, you also need to keep your head from danger. This means that you will need to have open space so you can keep your head from your enemy and keep your tail facing your enemy. This becomes more crucial as if you're fighting faster opponents, then a place with a bit more hindrances in the area will definitely help you. Remember this, if it's a creature you know you can outrun, then you should have a more open and empty area. If it's a creature that is faster than you, you should have a more dense compact area. If you're going to fight Apexes, you will find out that you need to get heavy bleeds in as soon as possible. 
If you can and or are able to, you should try and avoid getting hit, no matter what. Remember what I said about facing opponents like this in open areas. In a head-to-head -head fight, you won't be able to last. You need to move the battle into a more open area where you can have more mobility. If you try to move the battle into a more favorable area, but the guy doesn't follow you, then it's best to just walk away. That player know what he's doing and it will be a disadvantage fight for you. Even if your damage output is on par with them, your health is not. Taking a few hits from a Apex is not what you want. Taking hits from an Apex is no small thing. And if you do get a serious hit, then run away. You have the speed to do so and the stamina, so nothing stops you. Of course, your own charge up attack are pretty devastating as well. And scary. There is a good strategy when it comes to the charge up attack. If your enemy has a charge up attack of his own, then you should activate yours a few seconds after he's activated his, and once he's released his, you run in and hit him with yours. However, if you don't do this properly and activate it just a second after he activated his, then you won't get the chance to run in and hit him with yours, and you'll just be stuck in with cooldown. Like I said, even if your health aren't on par with them, your damage are. Each hit deals a devastating blow, as well as bleed damage. Of course, there is a cooldown, so you need to run out once you deliver a blow. Each blow stacks the bleeds on your enemy. Of course, this is just an example, so you can't just walk up to an Apex and hit him until he dies. Keep to the hit and run tactic, and stack bleed. After you've gotten the bleed, you need to keep your enemy moving. After you've gotten enough bleed in him, you only need to make sure that he doesn't sit down and get rid of the bleed. And if he does, then you just need to apply the bleed back on. After enough time has passed, that is when you can do a more direct approach. If you're sure that he has lost enough health, then that's when you can switch to the normal attack and finish the job. Also, one minor thing to keep in mind. If you fight in an area that has elevation, then you should be careful when going uphill. They are a bit faster than you in an uphill run. Personally, the Stegosaurus are a bit of a herd animal, so facing Apexes alone aren't recommended if you're new to the game. Also, pay attention in this instance, where the solo plates helps me gain a bit more stamina. The extra stamina can mean the difference between life and death. I should probably also say that a more flat terrain will be better suited for a Stegosaurus. The slower your opponent, the easier it is for you to actually win, even in the case of semi-aquatics. Stick with the strat I taught you, get heavy bleeds in and then keep your distance and let them bleed out. Your bleed is no joke, and in the case of semi-aquatics, if they, the situation get a bit too serious for them, they won't wander off too far from the river. If they do stay close to the river, you should reconsider if you should really stay in the fight. After all, giving up terrain advantages are pretty stupid. But hey, at least you don't have to worry if there's other semi-aquatics ready to attack a weakened you. In the case with mid-tiers, you'll find yourself in the complete opposite situation. In the previous example where you were at a disadvantage in a head-to-head -head fight, you now find yourself with the advantage. Of course, hitting them this time is a lot more difficult, 
they are faster than you. Which is why you should fight them in an enclosed area to limit their movements, and you switch to mainly using the normal attack, which are faster. Like I just said, you have the advantage in a head-to-head -head fight with a mid-tier. You just need to make sure he doesn't get your head. These battles can take longer. That is mainly because you need to make sure that they waste their stamina, and when they are low on stamina, that's when you can go in for the kill. At this point, many usually tends to try and act friendly. I mean, they attacked you, why should you show mercy? If killing your enemy isn't an option, and you rather not want to fight at all, then it's best to just keep your head out of reach. If they can't get to your head, they can't really do any serious damage. Which means it will be a pointless fight for them. Also, before I get some Karens on my hands, I'm not food denying by being in the water. I'm using the water to keep the enemy from my head. It wouldn't be any difference if I used a mountain wall instead. It's same strategy, just different means. But back to the matter at hand, this is a pointless fight if you keep your heads away from your enemy and they will most likely have to give up. Remember what I said about Pivot. The ability that makes you turn faster when you stay still for 5 seconds. These are the situations where that ability will come in handy. Small rests like this are rather difficult to keep track of. Mostly because of your only ability to attack is your tail, so your ability to see are a bit limited. That means your ability to turn in place, predict your opponent's movement, and then them will be crucial. If you're attacked by multiple adversaries, well, it kinda depends on what you're being attacked by. I mean, if you're attacked by low tiers, then you can just target one and focus on that individual and then end him when he is low enough. But if you're attacked by mid tiers, then it's best to take a position where they can't get to your head and just try and force it into a head to head battle. Trying to run is a waste of time. They are faster than you. Not to mention, if you do run, you're giving up what's keeping your head safe. Having to keep track of more than one attacker, it will be difficult to keep it safe. If what you should do is to keep your head inside a place where they can't get you, stack the bleed on them, and then kill them once they get low and have to retreat. So to summarize, against an Apex, you need to make sure that you don't fight them in an enclosed area, so you don't have the advantage in that situation. Move the battle into an open area. Once you've done that, stack the bleed on them as much as you can, and if they try to rest the bleed away, then run in and just apply the bleed back on them. Once you're sure that the bleed has done its job and they bled enough, then you can go and just kill them with a more direct approach. For mid-tiers, do the opposite, fight them in an enclosed area to limit their movement and try and force them into a head-to-head -head battle. Let them run around and tire themselves out, and once they are low on stamina, that's when you can go in for the kill. As for low tiers, just stand in place, try and predict their movement, and end them with a few tail swipe. Against a pack, keep your head out of danger apply bleed on to your enemies, and target the weak one. This strategy is a bit of a 50-50 to be honest. If you have any creature you wish for me to cover and they are not in this batch, then just comment them down below. I'll then add them to the next poll. Go to community post for more info, and with that, I'ma go work on the next creature.